This is a man that we should all know. This is a man that we should all read upon. This is a man we should know intimately. And the, the name of this Sahaba is Musab ibn Umair. And truly, truly in his life and in his actions and the ambassadorship of Islam that he brought and the legacy that he left, there is all the lessons that we really need to know. Yeah, Talks and assemblies on Islamophobia and Islam to children. One of the questions that I do present or ask the children is to give some adjectives to describe mm. what comes to mind when they think about Muslims and Islam. Yeah. And we all know these adjectives. We all know the yeah. words that come to mind. Even mm. though they are quite shy sometimes to present them, um, we, we, you know, we often get it out of them that the words that are associated are very negative. They're mm. terrorism, they're extremists, there's bombing, there's ISIS, there's forced marriages. So all these words that are associated mm. with Muslims and Islam generally give, give a negative, negative uh, perception. Sa mm. Having said that, there is obviously a lot of positivity and a lot of positive stuff that's happening in the communities. Mm. But I would say generally speaking, in the current climate we live, there is a lot of negativity around Muslims and Islam. University of Alabama to prove that actually 357% more press coverage when there's an attack or a terrorist incident that takes place and the perpetrator is actually a Muslim, which is subhanAllah, you know, if, if that is constantly being fed to people, that eventually does sway their opinion and, and, and their mind. And, you know, one of the things we have to bear in mind as well uh, in the UK is obviously we, we are a minority. <coughs> and sometimes there's this perception that, you know, um, that some people think that you know that we're here to take over the, the country and you know there's Muslims everywhere but when you put it into perspective you know the, the actual percentage of Muslims in the UK I'm going to do a little quiz actually now um, but yeah I mean before the quiz uh, Imran Bhai I'm not going to give away the percentage okay. however I, uh, in, in relation to the percentage when I, when I do ask this question to students at, you know, at schools mm. uh, one of the questions is what percentage of Muslims do you think there are in the UK yeah. the range of answers I get um, are from 10% mm. to 60%. Wow. Okay. Okay. And this is standard. And I would say the average is about 35, 40%. Okay. Now, Muslims were mentioned in a, in a good light. Mm. They were mentioned 21 times in a negative light. Wow. So that's a 21 to 1 ratio. If yeah. you can just imagine somebody sitting in front of you and saying, mm. Ali, you're fat. Ali, you're fat. <laughs> Ali, you're fat. Yeah. Ali, after a period of time, the person, even if you're not fat, I'm going to start thinking you're fat. Yeah, right? I have put on some fat recently to be fair. So. Well, I was indirectly trying to get that across to you. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with being fat. Yeah, so, as funny. you can see by my stomach. <laughs> but yeah, so so these perceptions uh, uh, are, you know, a lot of them are down to the media. A lot of them are down mm. to um, this global village and, and that yeah. we live in today. Yeah, and I think that the way we should respond to something like that, there's one way of just kind of hiding underneath our covers and saying, you know, everything's all, you know, really bad outside and we're just going to stay at home. But really, we, and this is what part I want to focus the show on, it's kind of like, well, what do we do then as, as Muslims within the, the UK, within the community and based here in Manchester, is what do we do? And this is why I think it is, you know, so, so important that whenever we engage with anyone, Okay, from the time we wake up in the morning to the time we go back to bed, we have to feel like we've got this badge on. And that badge is that we are a Muslim. And, you know, whenever we interact with any person in the workplace, whether we're in a school or people at Tesco, we have to just bear that in mind that whether we like it or not, we've got that label of being a Muslim. And people are going to judge the religion, they're going to judge uh, what the Muslim community is like based upon those interactions. The responsibility actually falls on all of us. And, that's just, and this is what the, the, the crux of the show is actually about. The ambassadors of Islam is actually us. We are the ambassadors of Islam. We are now the flag bearers and we are the ones who have to change that perception. Because ultimately, and this is a deep thought which I think about quite often, that you know if people have the wrong perception of Islam, ultimately it means they have the wrong perception of who Allah is. And they have a wrong perception of you know what the message that Allah sent down. Absolutely. And the people who are here now are us and we are the ones who have to change that perception which can be done in a main, you know, in a variety of, of different ways. And there's a really important point actually that I wanted to touch upon, that anything that we talk about now, it has to be in, be done purely with the intention for the sake of Allah. We shouldn't have the intention that we want to change the perception of people. That, that, it, that's, that's not it. The perception of people will change as a result of us practicing our faith and as a result of us becoming closer to Allah. And as a secondary school teacher, I see a lot of uh, students in school and I can see that they feel inferior 
to people of other faiths and none. Mm. And you know, one of the things we have to realize, and this is about confidence as well, but when it comes to practicing our faith, mm. is that we need to be confident about being a Muslim because we have to be confident that what we're on is on the truth, that this is the guidance that we need to follow, regardless of what the trends in society are. And that sometimes is quite difficult for people in the Muslim community to, to steer away from because if we're talking about being ambassadors of Islam and showcasing the true Islam, then essentially you have to be practicing the, the faith to the best ability. Uh, again, a really uh, interesting comment because we, we know that um, whether we like him or don't like him, Muhammad Salah, when he was in Liverpool and... and, and I love him, by the way. Uh, sorry? I, I love him, by the way. I, 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 I love it. Every <laughs> I don't follow football, so I don't, I don't know him personally. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, but we know that uh, Islamophobia mm-hmm. and Islamophobia incidents, incidents decreased profoundly yeah. Yeah. in the time that he's been there. Mm-hmm. Now, as a role model, you know, you know that obviously... Whatever, again, we're talking about spheres of influence. Mm-hmm. You can impact that perception based upon your the actions that you're doing in whatever field you're doing. I mean, an example is that there must be things which he's done, which his teammates or supporters think that it's strange. Like, it's kind of like he always goes into sujood when he scores a goal. And he, he's got some banging goals as well. There's a great goal against United, which I'll talk about another time. Do you want to talk about what for this one? But, okay. <laughs> but you know, watch football. It's really important for parents out there to give their children knowledge which is beyond the standard madrasa curriculum which might just be learning the quran um you know just learning um a few du'as and then just coming back home and then by the time they finish quran they take them out from the madrasa and that's it they think their islamic education is complete and you know it's really important for as as parents especially with children who are quite young from a very young age is to start explaining reasons why these questions can rear their ugly head later on and and form uh, the basis of people le- not o- not only leaving some of the obligations in Islam mm-hmm. but also leaving the faith and, and we know yeah. that we know this is a massive problem that is mm-hmm. happening in the community we, we, we can't push it under the carpet we know that Muslims as well as people converting and coming back to Islam there are people who are leaving also and this is a this problem stems from that exactly what you just said that those doubts and that um, blocking that inquisitiveness mm-hmm. that may have been at, the, at those young ages